Hello everyone. My name is Kyutak Lee, E Kyutak in Korean, from George Mason University, Korea, located at Songdo, Incheon. Today, I'm going to discuss the history of K-pop and the future of it. K-pop has been popular since the late 1990s globally, first from East Asia, then to worldwide. And you may know that BTS, Blackpink, or even Gangnam Style, most, uh, most popular K-pop songs in the world. So today, I, can, I will talk about the history of K-pop from the late 1990s till present. Then I also am going to talk about what the future will look like of K-pop. So first of all, let's see the brief history of K-pop from the first generation to the third generation. One thing that we should do first before talking about K-pop is what the K-pop is. Actually, people usually think that K-pop is a kind of Korean popular music or just the abbreviated term of the Korean pop music. But actually, K-pop is not the whole Korean popular music. It means that not every Korean popular music genre can be considered as K-pop. Actually, the term K-pop did not actually exist until the late 1990s. It was not used by anyone in Korea or outside Korea. But the K-pop, the name of the genre, was named firstly by East Asian audience and media in the late 1990s when it became known to East Asian countries, such as the East Asian program, TV program, or the radio program title, such as K-pop station, aired in China or Japan. It means that the term K-pop was not made, was not created by Korean industry or Korean media themselves, but by East Asian media first. Interestingly, the term K-pop was not fully accepted by Korean even until the late 2000s, when it was often used by East Asian audiences, because the term K-pop actually was not made by Korean media and Korean popular music scene, the industry, industry or the musician do not really, did not really know at that time what the K-pop was. But when it became one of the popular genre, not only in East Asia, but also outside East Asia since the late 2000s, then even Korean people came to think about K-pop and to use the term K-pop. So it means that K-pop as a genre has been defined mostly by global success, not directly related to its musical style or other, just like other genres. I mean, when K-pop did not become global popular music in East Asia and named by them, the term might not be used by Korean or the term might not be created in this period. So the K-pop itself, the genre has been closely related to the global success or its globality. So K-pop is a part of Korean popular music or K-pop is a kind of musical genre rather than the whole Korean popular music. Also, it is a kind of Although it is a kind of popular music genre, it has not been only by musical aspects such as rock, jazz, hip hop, etc. I mean, when you think about the musical genre such as rock, 
hip hop, jazz, there will be certain musical aspects that can define what the rock is, what the hip hop is, or what the jazz is, or just such as rhythmic patterns, melody lines, or the structure of the playing instruments, etc. Of course, K-pop has its own musical aspects such as group dance or uh, dance music or something like that. But when we think about the K-pop, there are some music, not actually a dance music, but a kind of rock music, but still considered as a K-pop or slow tempo pop ballad, still considered as K-pop. It means that K-pop has certain different styles, not just the musical aspect, which make different from other global popular musical genre. Also, we should not forget that K-pop has been characterized by its unique business model, not just the musical style. It means that when we think about the K-pop, we should always consider the unique business model that makes K-pop globally successful, which is the idol and agency system. So there is a musician called, type of musician called as idol, and the idol has been educated, trained, managed, and controlled by the entertainment agency, different from the, the typical relationship between musicians and their record labels. So it should be called idol and agency system. And also it should be called as the total management system related to idol and agency. K-pop's unique system such as this has not been only created by its own culture. Rather, it has been highly influenced by America, and Japanese musical style, as well as its business model. So we can say that K-pop is a kind of music that can not only be defined by its musical style, but should also be considered its different style as well as business model. Also, it has been highly influenced by America and Japan and became a kind of significant and independent genre since the late 1990s. Then now let's see the history of K-pop from the late 1990 till present. We can categorize K-pop since the late 1990 into three different generations. And actually the very first generation of K-pop began in 1996 when the group whose name is ATOT made their debut in 1996. ATOT was from the the biggest Korean K-pop entertainment agency, SM Entertainment, and showed how the idol could be educated and trained by the agency, made their debut by the agency, and became popular based on the uh, business strategy from the agency. When HOT became successful in its local market, Korea, other idol K-pop groups such as SES, Finko, Finko, Jack's Kiss, G.O.D., Baby Box, NRG made their debut. So those first generation K-pop idols were the very beginning of idol and agency system and the very new genre based on the trendy dance music and also showed how the K-pop fan became really important in its culture. It was based on the relatively new music companies from Korea, such as SM Entertainment, YG Entertainment, and JYP Entertainment. Actually, those entertainment agencies who are really popular and dominant in Korean music industry these days were actually the very beginner, only began their business in the mid-1990. But when they successfully made their groups in this period, then they could achieve a very economic success as well as the uh, growth of their size 
since the late 1990s and the early 2000s. The other things that we should not forget about this first generation idol or the first generation of K-pop was that there was a regional globalization mostly in East Asia. Means that these first generation idol was were the very important player who made the international success of this K-pop music for the first time, uh, mostly in East Asia. The very first region where K-pop became popular was the Chinese speaking region, mostly mainland China, Hong Kong, Taiwan, and some part of East Asian countries where Chinese ethnics have been living. It means that the popularity of K-pop began among the Chinese ethnics in East Asia, then became popular through their word of mouth. Interestingly, different from the uh, current generation of K-pop music, K-pop idols, their fans were mostly from Korea. It means that their music became popular of course, outside Korea, but their main goal, I mean, the musicians and K-pop musicians and the entertainment agency, their main goal were actually to attract domestic K Korean fans rather than the global fans. So when they produced their music or when they made their music video or, or when they Think, thought about how they reacted to their fans, they only actually considered domestic market rather than the global market. There were many reasons for that. The first of all, at the time, K-pop was not fully known to global audience, only for some East Asian audience. And second, it was not really profitable only in East Asia because at the time, the Chinese audience or the some East Asian audience who really like K-pop did not spend much money on purchasing musical product from K-pop industry. And third, there was not a enough communication means for K-pop industry to penetrate into the global market. In that period, although there was a kind of internet service, there was some internet media platform, but still, um, um, from global perspective, the internet service was not fully um, provided to almost every part of the world. And the importance of internet media at that time was not as big as it is today. So although the very first generation of K-pop began to make their music globally popular, it was only the beginning. Still, it was a kind of Korean local popular music. But things have been changed when the second generation of K-pop since the mid 2000s. Among all the different generation of uh, different musicians of this second generation, this girl band consisting of five members whose name is Wonder Girls might be the very meaningful in the history of K-pop because first of all, they led the revival of idol groups. I mean, in the mid 2000s, when the many first generation K-pop idols became retired or disbanded because of the contract between their agency and the musicians, this, the genre as a K-pop began to lose its popularity in 2004 or 2005. But when Wonder Girls made their debut in 2007, then they became huge popular among Korean audience. Then other entertainment agencies, I mean, actually Wonder Girls are from JYP Entertainment. And when other entertainment agencies such as SM and YG witnessed the very success of Wonder Girls at the time, they also decided to um, produce other boy bands or girl bands, such as uh, Girls' Generation, Big Bang, or others. 
although the Big Bangs and uh, Huber Jr., the uh, girls' generation, began their career earlier than the Wonder Girls, but still, what, with, without the very success, nationwide success of the Wonder Girls in 2007, other boy bands or girl bands of K-pop in second generation might not be really successful. One of the important reasons why Wonder Girls are so important in the history of K-pop is that they firstly made the very culture of prosumer, which is the term of uh, the combination of producer and consumer culture. At that time, it was called as UCC craze. UCC means the user creative content. It means that users or the audience did not uh, begin to not only enjoy music or to watch music video, but also they try to make, they try to produce their own products based on the music video or the music from the K-pop idols. So for example, they try to um, produce the reaction video, which is the reaction of the viewers who are watching K-pop videos, or they try to watch the cover dance video which is the dance covers from the uh, general audience. When they produce those music video, uh, those videos, such as reaction videos or the cover dance, they uploaded all those videos on the YouTube or on other media, uh, internet media platform to share with other K-pop fans. So even not only the music direct, the direct music video video from K-pop musicians, these fan-made video such as reaction video or the cover dance has become very important product for K-pop industry to be globalized. So because of those, uh, because of this culture, the prosumer culture, K-pop became a means not just to enjoy, not just to watch, not just to listen to, but to play with. So it became has become an important entertainment means for those audiences who are really familiar to the internet media platform or producing video as well. So as I told you just before, there were some bands such as Big Bang, Super Junior, Kara, Sonia Shide, which is SNSD or Girls' Generation, Shiny, 2PM. The significant difference between these K-pop group and the first generation K-pop idols is that those second generation K-pop idols became popular more widely, not only in East Asia, not only in South Korea, but also globally. Also, the term K-pop began to be used both internally and externally since then. The second difference between the first generation of idol and the second generation of idol is that while the first generation idol suffered from the unstable system of the idol and agency and also suffered from the unequal contract, unfair contract between uh, the agency and the idol, but there was the significant evolution of idol and agency system since the late 2000s. What I mean by the evolution is that first, the agency could nurture more competent and prepared idols based on their uh, developed system and the know-how that they got during the uh, early and mid 2000s. Also, uh, based on the interpretation from the government regarding the um, inequality between idol and agency. Since the late 2000s, there came a more equal relationship between agencies and the idols, such as the uh, seven-year contract. Seven-year contract means that the idol and agency should not make a contract longer than seven years, which try to guarantee the 
more equal relationship between them. And also the musical style as well became more matured based on the American influence dance music and also the Korean musical aspect. And based on these development, second generation idol came to go outside East Asia. You know the Gangnam Style became hit in 2012, right? And the global success of Gangnam Style paved the way for the next generation to be more globalized, to be more internationalized among wider audience. So since then, K-pop was not just the local culture of Korea or the regional culture of East Asia, but also became a big part of global culture. So since then, K-pop became the culture of East Asia that many East Asian countries tried to imitate K-pop and, and to create their own culture. That from Thailand or from Japan or from Taiwan, they tried to make a co-work or co-producing with the K-pop industry to make their own music. So just like American pop music or just like other Western pop music that has great influence on global pop music, K-pop now has come to have a certain influence on East Asian popular music that it become a reference or it become a kind of model. So those two pictures I'm showing is the Thai girl band influenced by K-pop industry that they invited K-pop uh, ins insiders to produce their own local um, girl band and they even try to make a co-producing with the Thai agency to make their own group, such as Candy Mafia or Gaia. I'm now showing the third generation of K-pop. The third generation began in 2013 when Gangnam, after Gangnam Style made its big success in 2012. So, there are many musicians whose name, I mean, as you know, the BTS, the most popular musician in the world these days, were Twice, GOT7, Monster X, Red Velvet, Loveless. How about Blackpink, right? And those musicians made K-pop, not just the local music or not just the regional popular music, but globally popular music, not only in East Asia, not only in uh, North America, but all over the world. Of course, including um, UAE. The global musicians, as a K-pop musician, as global musician, of course, are now considering not just their local Korean market or East Asia market, but also global market, when even from organizing the band. Also, when they try to produce music, they are always considering about the taste of the global audience. So when they are inactive, they try to make a world tour, co-work with the global musicians or recruiting international prospects into their bands, etc. So these days, it is really common for K-pop bands to have non-Korean members in its own band because now they are aiming at global market rather than the local market, which is the very new phenomenon because first generation K-pop idols are only thinking about their domestic fans, Sec while second generation K-pop idols, though they did not only think about Korean fans, but still the main target for their music and their performance is for Korean people. But the third generation are not only thinking about their local fans, rather often they are considering global market and global fans more than Korean fans because now K-pop is a kind of international music, global popular music rather than Korean local music. Also musically, those K-pop musicians are not just the factory produced products anymore. During the first generation or the second generation K-pop music, K-pop was a kind of the product rather than the artistic uh, music, mostly by the agency. 
it means that agency try to make music, produce music, write lyrics instead of the K-pop musicians. And K-pop musicians could not help but only accepting music made by the agency. But these days, not just the agency, but K-pop musicians themselves try to produce and write their songs for themselves. BTS might be the great example that they are making their own songs, they are writing their own lyrics, rather than the uh, direct uh, provision from the agency. And also even these days, K-pop group, they try to choose members of, on their own, not directly managed and controlled by the agency. So just like the typical musicians uh, from global perspective, now they are making their music on their own, and now they are organizing their band on their own, although still they are under the control and management from the agency. So we can say that now they are becoming more independent and free musicians rather than the directly controlled and managed by the agency. And in their music, not just the dance music, but some other kinds of music such as pop ballad or jazz or even indie kind of stuff, indie rock music can be a part of K-pop music, which can be called as the diversification of genres. These days, agencies are beginning to scout musicians from different genres, not just the dance music, and they try to make a collaboration with the indie musicians. And those collaborations are not just going on only with the Korean, but also with the East Asian audience, uh, musicians and even global musicians as well. So based on these uh, aspects of third generation of K-pop, now you can see that compared to uh, previous generations of K-pop, these days, K-pop musicians are going more global, they are more going more international, and they are going more authentic musician, not just the factory produced products. I'm bringing this picture to you, although um, because of the COVID-19 situation, not only K-pop musicians, but all the global pop music musicians cannot have the world live tour these days. But last year in 2019, BTS made a big concert in Saudi Arabia. And actually it was the very first time for K-pop musicians to have a such a big concert in the uh, Middle East uh, regions. So as you can see that there are many uh, Saudi Arabian fans who came to see, B who visited to see BTS in their own stadium, showing that the popularity of K-pop is not only limited to a certain area, but very worldwide, including different culture, different religion, different political system, and different race and ethnicities. And how about the Blackpink? Blackpink is one of also one of the most popular K-pop bands these days, and maybe the most popular girl bands, right? And their performance on Coachella Festival in the United States last year also showed some important aspects of third generation of K-pop that they, just like BTS made their popularity all over the world, Blackpink also has uh, also successfully made their popularity all over the world. And their music was also recognized not by only K-pop bands, but also by general pop music fans because the Coachella Festival where they made their performance was not open for only for the K-pop musicians, but actually open for musicians of different genres. And if you are not really competent in music, uh, Coachella Festival might not invite uh, the band. So when they sh showed their performance on the Coachella Music Festival stage, it means that now they are, K-pop musicians are recognized, not just a 
idol star, pop, uh, teen pop idol star, Bob also as the uh, authentic artist who can make their music, who can show their live on in front of the larger uh, audiences, and even can be uh, critically praised by the music critics as well. And besides K-pop musician, other Korean popular music genre also are going global thanks to the popularity of K-pop. So these bands I'm bringing, such as Sultan of Disco, Jambinai, Peggy Goo, or Sei Sumi, or are actually not the K-pop bands or K-pop music controlled and managed by the agency or educated and trained by the agency. Whether they are indie musicians who are making their music and who are distributing their music without the help from the entertainment agency or the system of uh, total management. But besides K-pop, these Korean popular musics are also drawing attention from the international audience. And I think that these kinds of uh, newly rising popularity of uh, Korean popular music other than K-pop is actually based on the popularity of K-pop, which means that when you come to have interest in K-pop, your interest also uh, goes to the other Korean popular music uh, musicians. Then I am now briefly talking about the perspective of K-pop. What will come next? I'm bringing one of the case study to talk about the future of K-pop. This band is called Super M. And actually this is the joint project of the SM Entertainment and the American big musical music label, which is Capitol Records. They, I mean, the SM Korean entertainment agency actually aimed at US and global market to uh, be successful, not actually in its domestic market, Korea, but actually in the United States and other countries because they were not fully enjoyed and welcomed in Korea, but more popular in global market based on their strategy aiming at US and global market more closely. So for example, their promotion was mostly aiming at global fans and American fans rather than domestic uh, Korean fans. And they released their album firstly in the United States, then in Korea. Although they are still uh, sung in Korean, but still what they try to, whom, to whom they try to appeal are mostly global fans rather than the Korean fans. So this is not the only a case of this super M made by SM, but other Korean K-pop entertainment agency are now aiming at global more actively rather than its domestic market. So for example, these bands such as NCT, Stray Kids, Card or Momoland, all of them were are K-pop band managed and controlled by the Korean uh, pop music agency, but their actual fan base is not actually uh, on domestic Korean fans. Rather, they are more popular outside Korea. Actually, for example, Card here is not really popular in Korea. They are not fully known to Korean uh, music fans, but they are more popular in Latin American countries because their music style is closer to that of Latin pop rather than the typical K-pop dance music. How about the Momo Land? They became really successful in the Philippines when their music was used by Philippine TV commercial. Then the agency of Momo Land decided to concentrate on Philippine market rather than Korean market. So they had a concert in Philippines, they had a fan meeting on Philippines more often than in Korea. So these are the pictures that I'm showing is that based on the uh, percentage of YouTube access to uh, products of certain bands. 
So for example, as you can see, the, the YouTube videos or other internet uh, product made by Momo Land, almost 40% of the uh, YouTube access is from Philippines, while only 8 to 2% was made by Korean fans, South Korean fans. How about Stray Kids, one of the uh, boy bands from the biggest Korean K-pop agency, JYP. They are more popular in the United States or Indonesia or Thailand. Rather, they are not really popular in its domestic market, its original market, South Korea, compared to their popularity in the United States, Viet uh, Vietnam, Indonesia, or Thailand. It means that these bands are now aiming at more global fans rather than its domestic fans. So actually, after the success of BTS in 2007 and 2018, recently, K-pop industry can expect more profit from the global market based on the expansion of US and Western European market. It means that on, uh, until the second generation of K-pop, although they became known to the global audience, most of the profit could be expected on Korean audience rather than the international audience because the international audience at the time was only beginning to know them. But these days when BTS became super popular, now K-pop is now known to all over the world. It means that fans from Western countries, America or other parts of the world are now recognizing them, purchasing their products, accessing their YouTube music videos more often to, uh, compared to Korean fans. So because of that, K-pop agencies are now considering global market more than the domestic Korean market. It means that now the voices from global fans are considered more important than those of Korean fans. The influence of global audience has been growing. So because of that, these days even there is a kind of conflict between local and global fans that global fans are complaining why K-pop musicians are not thinking about us often compared to the previous K-pop musicians, but still global fans are wanting more from K-pop uh, musicians and the agency because now K-pop is not just the local music, but the global popular music that many people in the world enjoys, enjoy and listen to. So, so far, I briefly overviewed the history of K-pop from 1.0 to 3.0, which is the first generation to third generation. Then I talked about the very current trend of K-pop music that it is now going global more and even it is not just the local popular music these days but more of the global music so there is a ch change happening in k-pop industry that musicians and k-pop industry are now thinking about global fans more than its domestic fans to be enjoyed and loved by wider fans it may make a big changes in k-pop industry and we may be able to witness those changes in a couple of years that maybe the, not just the uh, con continuation of third generation, but the very beginning of next generation, which is the very fourth generation of K-pop. So this is the very brief discussion of K-pop history and the perspective. I hope you enjoyed this video and also hope that we can meet in person face to face not just the, uh, through the video sometime when the COVID-19 situation became COVID-19 situation is solved thank you for listening to and listening to and watching this video and i hope you enjoyed this video
Thank you and bye bye.